Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management. Coming to you from the land of the hollow and Laurel Tennis Courts, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is another made-for-TV movie, 1977's The Spell, starring Lee Grant, says Susan Myers, James Olsen, and Helen Hunt. And it is a full adolescence crisis with magical powers. Yes, it is. Um, and it has been compared to Carrie yes. in a lot of ways, yes. which of course we'll get to later. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it stands on its own, I think. It does. And it does. It's an interesting little film. It really is. Yeah. And it is much forgotten, it seems. It definitely is. So we think you'll enjoy this one. Yeah, definitely. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 1977's The Spell. and sweatsuits to hide all their lard. Very funny. <laughs> this one. All right. And a great. Do I have to? I'm afraid so, Rita. Okay. All right, girls, let's go. <laughs> you can be excused. Yeah? Yes. You know that guy from Fort Ord I was seeing? What about him? He used to take out the home economics teacher before she got fat. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd want to take out that tubbo? <laughs> you gonna throw it like that, tubbo? I'm warning you, Jackie. You better stop calling me that. I'm warning you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just call you Moby Dick then. <laughs> Class. 
Federal Energy Administration took steps Monday to head off shortages of home heating oil in several Midwestern states. At the same time, the agency issued new regulations permitting diversions of propane gas from industrial uses in homes, hospitals, and other high-priority users, if necessary, to compensate for shortages of natural gas. The actions approved by the special White House Energy Advisor were taken in response to the fuel crisis in much of the eastern two-thirds of the nation as a result of abnormally unseasonal weather. So much for the news, and now back to the news. Here. Here. Do you really need that second help? Extra will pay for it. You are paying for it. I'll take it. Don't you two have to get ready for school? No. Why not? Well, it has to do with Jesus. It's not his birthday. Oh, hilarious. That's really hilarious. <laughs> Trying to be helpful. Well, don't be. Is all this necessary? Excuse me. Christina. But I'm not finished. Why did you do that? Huh? You heard me. That remark about a second helping. Oh. Because she's getting fat, and you don't say a word. You don't help her by humiliating her. Let's get a governess in here. Then neither of us will have to do she it. She is too old for a governess. Oh, well, not a governess per se. A sort of uh, housekeeper who's good at mediation. Well, swell. We can have a union. The kids will uh, have strikes and labor wars. Okay. Let's do something. Um, how about the grapefruit diet? Glenn, she's an adolescent. That's her problem. Don't you remember when you were 15? I do. What a memory. Well, it was tough. I ate my way out of going to two proms. Okay. How do we approach her? We don't humiliate her. Don't humiliate her. You got it. Oh, I left some uh, stuff for Margaret to iron. Oh, she went to her sister's for a few days. I'll oh, do it. No. You'll like it. I like it. Oh, uh, would you pick up a bottle of Calagasta? I've tried all over town. Would you try Applebee's? Okay. Bye. Gwen. Bye. breakfast, Chris. What's your day like? I'm going shopping, remember? Oh. If I'm up to it, honey. Rita did it again. You know, ever since Jackie Siegel's accident, she's been acting oh, really that strange. was nearly a month ago. Some of the kids said when she fell, she Say, started... How about doing the dishes for me, sport? You want to talk? Nope. Bad one, huh? What? Real bummer. Medium bad. Might help to talk. Might help you, won't help me. <laughs> okay. You know, Rita, you really make it very difficult for me to say I'm sorry. Is Kathleen still being peculiar? I don't know. I haven't seen Ryan. And Kathleen doesn't want to see anyone. Especially me. Well, something must have happened. Best friends just don't turn off like that. 
You know, he's called in a parapsychologist. You're kidding. Uh, analysis didn't do it, so now he's looking for ghosts in her closet. Weird. The whole town is getting strange. Ever since that Jackie Siegel accident. Mmm, love it. Seen the price? I'm afraid to look. 350. Oh, I hate it. Let's hit the banana cake at Donatello's. Oh, that cake is ruining me. I don't even bother to eat it anymore. I just apply it directly to my hips. You don't want to go? I didn't say that. Okay, then. Yes, lady. Be honest. Is the banana cake fresh? Yes, ladies. The banana cake is fresh if there's any left. Well, what's the alternative? Well, we have two-day-old rum cake mm. and some nice eclairs if they haven't gone bad. Is that what you want? No, no. We'll have the banana cake if there's any left, please, and some coffee. Yeah. You too? Oh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Eat something. <laughs> Are your girls going to swim in the meat? Chris is. Rita's too old. Too old at 15? Mm. Do you love it? I guess Terry's going to compete. She's been so damned impossible, though. I'm not counting on it. And Lynn hates Joe Standish, so I don't know. Who's Joe Standish? The new gym teacher at school. She's also the guidance counselor. And she's a tough one. Well, you have to be to handle our kids eight hours a day. Oh, I know. Terry and Lynn are constantly at each other's throat. Please, tell me I'm not alone. You are not alone. Thank God. You are in luck, ladies. Oh. Fresh banana cake. <laughs> You know, Rita's having an awful time of it. Chris and the other kids know how to go right to where it hurts. And with Rita right now, it's her weight. And they call adults cruel. Used to kill me last year. When I go and pick her up at school, she'd be hiding in a building, waiting for me. And she'd only come out when she saw my car. And even then, those kids still found a way to yell some rotten thing at her to finish her off. I bet they take classes on how to hurt each other. Sadism, 1A. Speaking of schools, did you hear about that Webster Elementary School business? What? On the news. Oh, they had to close the school. The kids were throwing up, eyes burning, disorientation. Hmm. I tell you, the whole peninsula is getting weird. How was the banana cake? Good? If I ever come in and ask for this recipe, don't dare give it to me. Trust me. <laughs> Rita! these games. We made a bet. She lost. What kind of bet? She said she could hold her breath for two minutes. And she didn't make it, so now she's mad. How intelligent. May I be excused? Please. Why are you out of breath? I beat her. I made it to a minute and a half. And if she'd lose about 500 pounds, she might be able to make it to That's a minute. That's enough. That is enough. You can scratch shopping. Oh, Mom! Oh, Mom! Will you stop it, Rita? Damn it. I can't stand her whining. Well, I can't Will stand you? her you off at both of you. She starts it. You both start it. We don't like each other, Mother. Face it. Rita, that's an awful thing to say. That is awful. No, it isn't. It doesn't bother her any. Ask her. No, it doesn't bother me. It bothers me. Well, let's not discuss it. Boarding at gate 
Well, I thought we might go out for a drink. Uh, uh, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Yeah, something's the matter. No kiss, no hello. You're not programmed for anything but going to Los Angeles Keep and coming your voice home. Down. Boy, have you changed? I remember a time we used to sit on the football Shh. field. You with one goal post, meet another, a bottle of cheap red wine between us, yelling right. dirty things at each other. Right. What's the matter? Am I embarrassing you? Yeah, you want to yell? Uh, you want to hear? In, in the He'd say, I want to take are you. you. Are you going to try and ruin my reputation? No, I'm just trying to put some of the old pizzazz back in our marriage, you know, right where it belongs. Anymore. We're not 85 either, but you act like you're pushing it. You want to drop by the field on the way home and have a replay? Don't make fun of me, Glenn. I'm kidding. I'm not either. I'll meet you the three nights. You're on. Now get in that car and drive. I'll get there before you. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I will. And she had the strangest expression on her face. Like what? I don't know. A oh, kind of cynicism, hardness, cruelty. I don't know. A cynic at 15? <laughs> Only in these screwy times could you be a cynic at 15. Maybe I saw something that wasn't there. I heard a great definition of a cynic the other day. Hmm. Um, knowledgeable. Apathy. <laughs> Isn't that great? Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable apathy. apathy. Maybe we should send her to a psychiatrist. Or a firing squad. Come on. Scratch that. Rita's going through a very, very bad time now, and she needs our support. Nobody ever said the kids were easy. And some are more difficult than others. Well, she's difficult because she's unhappy. She's unhappy because she's fat. And she's fat because... Yes? You want another drink? She's fat because... Something's missing. And analysis will tell us. Oh, I'll tell you. Don't say love. Do you love her? Of course I love her. Do you love her enough? Chris is so easy for you to love. Rita's harder. But she's ours too. She's a part of both of us. Can't we both love her a little harder? Well, I could use a little too, you know. She looks at me like I just won the ogre award. How do you look at her? Like she'd just given me the award. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a shot. I'm still going to kick her in the butt when she gets smart and compliment her when she does right. And pray God she's 18 tomorrow. <laughs> Tonight. Oh. And that's all the time I'm giving her right now. My evenings are short enough. Take care of it. I'll well, call then, the, yeah. the door of the person. Hmm. All right, honey? Yeah, that light is still out. Oh, he's coming Tuesday. I thought he said Monday. No, Tuesday. And when do the cable people come? Thursday. We're home. Hi. How's dinner coming? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, we left. She was supposed to fix dinner. She didn't. I'll try again. Did she make an attempt to start dinner? No. Did you? Mm-hmm. Well, was there any excuse why she didn't make dinner? She said she had better things to do. Boop in the rear time. All right, Glenn. What did you make, honey? Surprise! 
Who left my bathroom in a mess? Oh, I did. I was dying some eggs. Well, after dinner, you and some cleanser up here, huh? Chris, I want some answers. Well, Rita said she was going out and she would be back in time for dinner. Who was supposed to make dinner? You, I guess. She's got a surprise coming. No dinner for her? Don't look. You have nothing to worry about. Wait and see what I mean. Good Lord. I'll clean it up. You're not kidding. What could you make that would take all these pots? Pizza. Pizza? From scratch. Well, where'd you get the recipe? Kid at school. A kid at school? An Italian kid. You're heading for a fall, little lady. Your mother asked you to do something. I had something else to do. And that was more important. Yes. I think you can go without your dinner tonight. Big deal. I'm going. Thanks for dropping in. Sorry about dinner. Are you Rita? Well, it's no great tragedy, is it? No, but it's rude. And I think it's a rotten thing to do. Can I go to my room? In a minute. I'd like an explanation. Where I went? For a start. Just out, walking. I know that it's hard to believe that I felt that walking was more important than making dinner, but I did. That's it? That's it. Okay. You stated your case. Now I'll state mine. This is not a crash pad. This is our home. You will live here as a member of our family, not a guest. If you don't... Then what? Then you will have to find another place to live. You don't care too much for me, do you? How dare you say that to me, Rita? I love you, you know. No, I am not sure I do know that. You're the only one I do love. Nobody, just you. I love you, too. Sometimes you make it very hard. We all do. Don't give me that we stuff. I don't love my father any more than he loves me, and Christina could die for all I care. Really? Christina is a simpering little toad. She traps you with all her looks. Underneath, she's weak and stupid, unworthy and useless. Stop it. You gave me life. You cared for me when I was sick. You held me when I cried. You fed me when I was hungry. Those things are not forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. Nothing is forgotten. Each deed is written and filed, and when I must, I draw upon those deeds and act upon them. I reproach myself for nothing. Each deed is written and filed, and when I must, stop it! Stop! Stop it! Rita! Stop it! When I must, I draw upon those deeds and act upon them. I reproach myself for nothing. My actions are based upon deeds performed for me. Each deed is written and filed, and when I must, I draw upon these deeds and act upon I reproach myself for my
and it didn't seem to be coming from her. It was, it was a recitation, a litany, something rehearsed. But it was also delivered with anger, with commitment. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to shake it out of her, bring her back, or hold her tight to let her know that it was all right. But I loved her. But it frightened me being that close. For the first time, I was afraid of my own daughter. I was afraid to take my eyes off her, to turn my back on her. I was afraid to hold her. You're probably wondering why I didn't do something then. It certainly wasn't natural behavior. But kids are always dramatizing. They work hard at trying to be noticed, acknowledged, especially Rita. At school, they tease her for being different. At home, she flaunts it. I thought it was just another act. Rita, I told you no dinner. I think you should go to your room. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Glenn. Wait a minute. Oh. What was all that about? I don't know. What are we having for dinner? That's terrific. Well, I don't think all the lights worked out. Mm, mm. It's kind of funny. Mm, looks great. Oh, Mom. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Dinner's on me. <laughs> I'll get Rita. No, no, Rita. It's not right. It doesn't seem right to you, Marion, because she'll be unhappy. Now, that's lousy reasoning. She asked for it. I can't leave without her. In the first place, missing one meal won't hurt her. In the second place, it's about time she found out who's running this household. She parades around here like she's a damn movie queen. Let's go home. All right, I'll warm up the car. Chris! Hi, Glenn. Mary and Stan. Hi, Jane. what are you doing Sit down. Before the big battle. Oh, getting my brief together in the bar. Oh, that's what they mean by the California Bar Association. Oh, man, she is gorgeous. You must be sick of hearing that. When does a woman hate a compliment? Yeah. Where's Rita? Oh, she's doing her homework. I really wish you well tomorrow. I think you mean it. I'm right, I do. You nail those landlords to the wall. To the wall. Oh, I better go home. I think I'm a little high. Mm. Well, you'll fit right into the Elliot's party on Friday. Oh, yes, the Elliot's. You know, just once, I'd like to go to a party and enjoy myself. I'm getting too old to fight all the time. Same old routine, shake up the wasps. <laughs> uh, you all get purged. I just get tired. Oh, come on, you love it. No, I mean it. I'd just like to sit there and listen to their pap and get quietly loaded. Well, you're on your way tonight. <laughs> well, I'm off. Ciao, all. Good luck tomorrow. Out of Thank you. Oh. Let's go. What's the matter? Are you all right?
Are you sure? Yeah. Did, did you see him? I saw the car, Marion. Maybe it just looked like his it car. It was Stan. What are you going to do? I don't know. You know you could ruin him? He could have killed me. It doesn't make any sense. I know he was high. Call him. Yeah, you can tell that. Get in the car. Get some soda. Do you want something? No, thanks. What is it? Huh? Somebody's been driving my car. Were you driving the car? I hate driving. Where were you with the car? I told you I didn't take the car. Well, somebody's been driving that car. The hood is warm. That is. Hate to disappoint y'all. So? So if you'll check the garage, you'll find my electric blanket on the ledge. Why? I was trying to hatch these eggs. I needed a flat surface, so I used the hood of the car. Where's the mother? Dead. Well, why not here? Why the hood of my car? I never tried hatching anything before. I didn't know what to expect. Thought there might be a mess. And if you messed up the hood of my car? I'd have cleaned it up. I don't understand you. I know. No luck? No. <laughs> Nothing happened. Well, you... Keep it warm. Just might hatch. It's funny how things die for no reason. <sighs> Gonna lock up downstairs. Are you through there? Yeah. Good night, darling. Hmm. I feel warm. <laughs> I'm okay, really. Well, let's just see about it. Don't both of you talk at once. What is it? Helen is on the extension. She's nearly hysterical. He blacked out. Doesn't remember a thing. I knew it. Stan, now, uh, just listen to me. I didn't tell anybody, so if nobody saw you, you're okay. Well, you know, that's your department. No, I don't know what you should do. I think we should talk, though. Good. Yeah. Whenever. Okay. He says his enemies would love to get a hold of this. It could ruin him. Of course. How does it feel to hold a man's future in your hands? It's scary. There must be an explanation to all this. Don't harass the left wing.
a shame to lose it. Time marches on. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you never do your Richard Widmark anymore. Oh. Oh, my famous wheelchairs. Yeah. Where I pushed the old lady down the stairs. Yeah. And when I see me push the old lady <laughs> down the stairs, watch this <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Your work's killing you. Can't you cut back? Well, you don't cut back in furniture design. You stay ahead. Toss in the chips. Why don't we toss in a few? We don't have to imprint anything. All right. I'll close the plant and I'll open a handicraft store and we'll make funky jewelry out of our silverware. I'm afraid that we'll fall into a martini pitcher and we'll never be heard from again. We're not going to drown. Promise. do with a lot less, you know. I mean, keeping up with the neighbors is a thing of the past. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. We have each other, and we have the girls, our family is the only important thing. I never see you anymore. Good morning. How do you feel? Oh, pretty good. Good morning. You hungry? No. What do you want? Some fruit? It's all yours. <laughs> Can I have some coffee? I guess so. Me too? You stick to milk. What are you doing today? Well, this afternoon I'm going to a charity tea, and then your dad's working late, so this evening I'm going over to the Bellamy's Kathleen call. No! She might have something you can catch. She doesn't. Please. Well, I, I have to, Rita. Kathleen is my friend. I agree with her. She shouldn't go. Eat. Hi, Hi. Come on in. Sure. Sit down. Okay. How about a drink? No, thank you. How is she? Uh, she's been feeling fine all day. She's really looking forward to seeing you. Oh, good. Well, where is she? Oh, she's upstairs. She'll be down in a few minutes. I, uh, 
You, uh, what? Called in a parapsychologist. I heard. Well, damn it, Marion, I didn't know what else to do. I had to call somebody. <laughs> I'll laugh if you laugh. I can't laugh. I've watched Kathleen come apart for no reason. We've tried everything. Marion, don't give me that look. I'm sorry, Ryan. It's just that the occult, you know. I'll go get Kathleen. What did he say about her? Did somebody hexed her? He's, um, he? well, he's fine. Uh, his brother's there with him. The doctor thought somebody should be around. And, yeah. Well, the shock and everything kind of wiped him out, but his heart is okay. It's yeah. nothing to worry about. Oh, God. And the kids are studying. And I saw Stan. He cried all over me, and we vowed an undying friendship and free legal fees for two years. He still doesn't remember anything. It's a big blank. <sighs> Do you want anything? How about some soup? No, no, honey. Nothing. I... You sure? How do you feel? Rest, okay. Oh, pretty shaky. Brought you some soup. Mm. Thank you, honey. Make you feel better. Didn't I? Yes. And then you left. Where did you go to? Just out. Did you go over there? Should I go over there? Why don't you tell me? How is it? Good. It's packaged. Rita. I didn't go over there. I'm not hungry. Welcome back. Well, here we have the beginnings of our film. And the first person you may notice is the spectacular Lee Grant. Yeah, um, she was in The Omen 2, mm -hmm. and she was in Airport 77 as well. Yeah, she was in Valley of the Dolls and the movie Shampoo. And she is a great actress, but in this one, she's rather unlikable. You know, so far, all the characters in this movie are unlikable. I'm not rooting yes. for any of them. Nope. And I know we're supposed to be, uh, you know, feeling sorry for Rita at this point, 
but I'm not quite there yet. I'm not feeling bad for Rita. No, no, me neither. And speaking of Rita, uh, that's Susan Myers. Um, she was in True Confessions with Robert De Niro. Yes. And she was in one of my favorite comedies. Revenge of the Nerds. Love that movie. Yes. Yeah. And playing her little sister is Helen Hunt. And she's been in a ton of things. A ton. You know, she was in Twister. And Castaway. She was. She was in the television show Mad About You. And she is an Academy Award winner. Yeah, she is. She won the Academy Award for Best Actress for the film As Good As It Gets uh, with Jack Nicholson in 97. Now, she's quite young in this. She's yes. about 14 years old. Um, and this isn't her first film. She had no. done quite a few other made-for-TV movies before this. Yes, I believe her family was involved in the film mm. industry. But uh, playing the father, you have James Olsen. Yeah. Um, he was in the Amityville Horror 2, The Possession, which I love that movie. It's a good movie. It is a good movie. Yeah, it is. He was also in uh, The Andromeda Strain as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this was directed by Lee Phillips. Yeah, um, he had directed uh, The Stranger Within. He had done television. Uh, he did some episodes for MASH and Kung Fu. Yes. Uh, he was an actor as well. Um, he was in uh, The Twilight Zone yes. and The Outer Limits. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he also uh, did the TV show Hard Hat and Legs. Did he? <laughs> for real. Really? What a crazy name. Wow. Um, <laughs> 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 Look that one up. Yeah. Um, the music is done by Gerald Freed. Yeah. He did the music for I Bury the Living, uh, yes. which is on our Patreon. Yes. Which is a great old film. It is a good one. Yeah. Um, he had also done the music for The Baby, which is complete left field. Now, we've had requests to show The Baby. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say, The Baby may be further off the charts than Pin. I think it is. I think it is. It it's out there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, maybe, who knows? Maybe, maybe someday. Who knows? You know, it's possible. Anything's possible. Now, this screenplay was written by Brian Taggart, who claimed that he wrote this and completed it before Stephen King's Carrie. Yeah, which of course Carrie came out a year before this. Now, there are definitely some similarities, which we'll get to. Yes. Yeah. Now, that's kind of like saying, you know. The uh, Swiss cake rolls came out before ho hos. <laughs> yeah. Ho hos are still they're better. St yeah. They're still better. Right. But, you know, I think that uh, we're off to a good start. Yeah, definitely. So let's see where this goes. Yeah. So let's get back to the spell. Problem. She's as bright as a penny on the auto roll as you know. The girls tease her. They make fun of her. The rest of the time, they don't even talk to her. Uh, the seagull girl used to tease her a lot. I, I know. Rita is not an unattractive girl. Oh, no, she's pretty and gifted. What about Jackie Seagull? What? What kind of girl was she? She's very pretty and popular. A little preoccupied with boys. What happened, Miss Standish? Jackie fell. She just fell. And the fall broke her neck. I wish I could be more help to you. Mrs. Matchett, I know that Rita's your daughter. And I know you'd like her to be more like other girls. But some girls will be different. Most of the people who've left a meaningful legacy in this world have been. <laughs> no, that's not much for you. Not this week. Thank you very much. Okay, my lovely, shower time! Mile. Honey, these are your friends. They better be. Let's have a drink. Hey, 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 hey. 
Phoenicia likes it. Could do with a few more dumplings. Oh, is Stan here? Right over there. Yeah, Hatley's trying to shoot holes in his plan for a national health program. <laughs> One of them's going to need a doctor before it's over. Well, I think you know everybody else here. Jill. Marion. Marion, I want you to meet someone. I see you in a minute. Yes. Marion Matchett. This is Dale Boyce. How do you do? Hello. Oh, Jill. Excuse me. I was sorry to hear about your friend, and about Mrs. Bellamy. You knew her? Her husband called me in. You're the parapsychologist. She was murdered, you know. I'm sorry, I tend to be blunt. It's putting it mildly. Somebody hated Kathleen Bellamy enough to kill her, and you were the instrument, Mrs. Matchett. You were the weapon. You know that your name terrified her? I am her, not listening to that you. That your I... physical presence killed her? That is not true. I tried very hard to reach you. And I wouldn't have listened. Would you please excuse me? You should leave the area altogether. May you won't. Of course not. Mrs. Matchett, I am on a lecture tour. I'm going to be in San Francisco. If you should ever need me, I will... Elliot party was my first experience of such a concentration of power. The Lang Meadows telekinetic folio clearly states that such concentrations are usually accompanied by an odor and or a sound. The odor is said to resemble vegetable decomposition and the sound is a clicking, a clicking noise. I experienced neither of these, but noted a swelling of the glands in my throat, accompanied by a rising fever resulting in epidermal sensitivity and a strange visual phenomenon I can only describe as a wave of ink. My initial assumption was secondary delirium brought on by the fever, but I am not ruling out the possibility of visual recording of the power itself. If that is true, then the alpha shade places the source of evil at between plus 30 and 35. My breathing returned to normal within five minutes after leaving the source of power. After the experience with Kathleen Bellamy, I should have packed us all up and left, but I didn't. Meeting you only confirmed my suspicions. I never told you I went to see Jackie Siegel's mother. I think I was hoping that Jackie would answer the door and make a liar out of her mother and Joe Standish and everyone else. I discovered it was just another cruel joke that they were playing on Rita. It was a stupid thing to do. I got an hysterical mother who slammed the door in my face. Still, not enough proof. I would have needed a train wreck on my front porch to convince me something was wrong. And the nightmare got worse. I can't believe.
matter with Chris? She seems upset. She seems upset to you. Huh? No, no, I think she's going to be all right. It's just that... Well, she and Rita were having it out with both girls when we're having a shower. Well, what did they fight about? Well, hell. Didn't I, you hear anything? I don't know. Please, just get her out. What were you two fighting about? Nothing. I want to know. She's been spying on me. I warned her to stop. What kind of warning? I am talking to you. The only kind of warning she understands. What kind of warning does a 15-year-old kid give a 13-year-old kid? To grow up. That is not a warning. That is a request. I told Chris that if she didn't grow up, she wouldn't be around to grow up. And that's a threat. People who mess around in other people's business, people who laugh at other people because they're different, deserve to be punished. Jackie Siegel was one of those. Jackie Siegel fell. That was an accident. I know. I was there. Rita. You're playing a dangerous game with your mind. You could delude yourself right into a sanitarium. You're scaring a lot of people. You're not fooling me. It's cheap and easy to scare people who are younger than you. The only power you have is the power of your own will. That's all any of us has. That's right. You want anything before I leave? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think I'd like one of those garbage sandwiches. You know, everything in the fridge. Heavy on the mayo. Oh, that's on me. Just heat up. Want a beer? Yeah, but you don't have to bring it up. I'll come down. Damn right. Oh, what was that? Oh, right. oh I love it when you swear at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that. Not now. Oh, oh, Not oh, now. Oh, it's windy. Yeah. Huh. You want me to go with you to ride this? No, if he's, uh, if he's not feeling well, it'll probably be too much. Tell him that I'll come by toward the end of the week. Ryan?
Hello? Ryan? Mrs. Matchett. Ross! Oh, you scared the hell out of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, why are all the lights out? Where's Ryan? My brother's dead, Mrs. Matchett. This afternoon, he took a sudden turn. His heart just couldn't take it, I guess, with Kathleen dying and all. I know how you felt about, about both of them. Uh, we'll let you know about the funeral arrangements. We know he had a bad heart. He had a weak heart. Honey, it's the same thing. Oh, it... It slowed him down. It should have killed him. After that shock? <sighs> Honey, I... hate to bring this up now. I think we ought to send Rita away. Do you understand? I want to send her away. No. We can't dump her like garbage. Nobody's <laughs> dumping her. Remember that, that school? Outside of London, St. Catharines. If you remembered last year, she begged us to let her go there. Oh. No! I don't want to talk about it anymore tonight. Well, we have to. I'm going to have to move fast. Look, it won't hurt to check it out. Well, maybe going away is what she needs. She needs us. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe she needs a break from us chance to breathe on her own. Kids are different there. Just let me check it out. Please, let me check it out. times you started to tell me things and each time you stopped I want you to tell me now I can't you must I'm afraid you have to what are you doing Rita, and that Standish lady. They sing together, they sit, and they sing weird things. What kind of things? I couldn't get close enough. Where do they do this? Miss Standish's. Do they do it alone? Yeah. What does the singing sound like? I don't know. Think. It's kind of a chant, like... Were you alone when you saw them? No, Mrs. Bellamy was with me. We went that day to collect for the paper drive. At school, the day you couldn't take me. I remember. When she didn't answer the ring, we went around to the side and looked in, through the window. That night, Rita told me that if I ever told anybody, that she'd fix me. Chris? really happened to Jackie Siegel. She fell, just like Rita said she would. Just like Rita told her to? She still fell. The kids at school were scared to death of her. They all used to tease her. When they saw what happened to Jackie Siegel, exactly like Rita said it would. What upset your sister? Jackie and the kids were calling her names and teasing her and laughing at her. And Rita started to get all red and cry. 
What did you do when your sister was crying? Nothing. Why? I'm ashamed that you should ask. How can you protect her when you know that she's done all those things? In the first place, I don't think she has. And in the second place, she is my daughter. She's sick and crazy. She is not. She is different. She tried to kill me. Now, that was an accident. It wasn't an accident. She tried to make it look like it was an accident. And she's fooling everybody. How can you protect her? One day, you will see. here. I know that. You picked that up. And I wouldn't have to be as sensitive to feel that. Won't you please sit down? Are you? That sensitive? Yes. Well, we all are. Theoretically, everybody has the ability to send and to receive. Not everyone's developed it. What's the trick? Pretty much knowing that it's there. It's, uh, it's like IQ. Some people have a high IQ, some people are low, but everybody has an IQ. What do you want to know? What the hell's going on? There's a power loose. Are you aware that this area is the most powerful in North America? How do you mean? Psychically. Psychic energy. Someone has learned to tap that and to transmit it and has taught others to transmit. Well, you can't organize that sort of thing. Oh, yes, you can. Hitler was able to mobilize an entire nation with words and only with words. The human brain is a very powerful weapon. One word can become a bullet. But you don't believe me, so I won't go on. Do go on. Why? I don't know. Control, power, always a strong motivation. Do you know what a mantra is? A chant. Yes. And it works. It's used in transcendental meditation, Nishirin, Shosho Buddhism, pretty much the same thing. And the reason that it works is that the individual passionately wants it to work. Now, if that will work for good, it could as easily work for what we might call evil. One genuine sensitive with a hierarchy of sensitives under him. I leave it to your imagination. <laughs> You're uh, welcome to stay if you like. Oh, no, thank you. I think that you should stay. Oh, I can't. I, I have to get Mrs. home. Mrs. Major, please. We must talk. You and I must really talk. Will you wait for me? Yes, all right. It's good. Christina helped. Yes, I tell you. Mm. It's gorgeous. Fattening, though. Was that for my benefit? You know it wasn't. Don't look for a fight. It is fattening, but sometimes it's good for the soul to eat something that's really rotten for you now and then. Uh, 
Uh, I'm not very hungry. Can I be excused? Mm. Yeah. Sure. Some news. Good news, I hope. Well, for Rita, yes. That school that you wanted to go to in England, I did some checking today. I made a call. And you can go late. Your grades are good. You're on the honor roll, and they set under the circumstances. But I don't want to go now. I like it here. But six months ago. I've changed my mind. Honey, we thought that it might be a good I idea. said I've changed my mind. Rita, I think it's best. I don't. I can see that. But since you don't run this household... Glenn. Her passport's good. It's only been two years since we were there. So we don't have to worry about that. I've got her on Pan Am Thursday night. I thought we'd all go into the city early and have dinner. Why don't you get on that plane yourself? Rita. <coughs> Nobody's getting rid of me. I'm staying. Staying until you're all dead and buried, till you rot in your graves. You'll never get rid of me. Never. <coughs> I'll put her on that plane if I had to kick her on. Who the hell does she think she is? I'll drop 30 milligrams of Librium in her milk and pour her on. She's going, I'll tell you that. She's going up and over that ocean and out of our lives. All right. I know that you don't think I love her. I do. Or at least I did. Something on that sour somewhere. I don't know where. You two. You two were in trouble from the beginning. Every father wants a little princess, and she just never was one. She came out kicking and screaming like she hated being born. And she's been paying us back ever since. Maybe she knew what was in store for her. I don't know. She's mine. She's mine. I... I can't give her up. Not yet. What are you fighting for? A nervous breakdown? <sighs> fighting for us. We're a family and she's a part of it. Well, she can be a part of it in England. On Thursday, we give her a second chance and we give ourselves a break. I'm not going to see you come apart at the scenes just because you won't admit defeat. She's hurting inside. Can't you see that? Can't you see she's all twisted up? I can't leave it like this, a bunch of broken glasses and a lot of hatred. I... I need time with her. Alone. You've got a high tolerance for pain. All right, I'll get Chris and we'll go to a movie. No, uh... Uh... I need more time. I... You and Christina sleep over at Stan Reston's. I, I want the whole night with her. Please. Please. All right. I'll call him. Glenn.
I've never done it before. Not really. Not alone. Rita, you have the power. And now you know how to use it. Can I just make him sick? Well, he'll get well. And then you'll have to deal with it all over again. My mother? She'll get over it. Look, I don't want people to die. I liked Ryan Bellamy. I had nothing to do with that. His heart just give out. But if you hadn't done that to Mrs. Bellamy? I had to. She would have told everybody. Rita, I don't like this turnaround. You didn't feel like this when you first came to me about Jackie Siegel, did you? But you said you could stop her. I didn't know you were going to do that. Oh, yes, you did. You knew exactly. Why do you think I put her up against you? Look, you said you were going to humiliate her. And I did. That silly little girl. I would have killed her for you. She was your enemy. Kathleen Bellamy is our enemy. Oh, Rita, we're building something. You have a great power. It's as great as my own. Now, I let you get away with scaring your sister, but I can't let your father put you on that plane. Look, I'll make you sick. Real sick. I can't take that risk. Soon we'll have a whole community of special people. A community of... Well, do you think it starts with us? But I'll be right back where I was. What do you mean? Well, everybody will be the same. I won't be different or special. You are special. It's mine. I don't want to share it. Real power is in the sharing. No. Rita, trust me. No, for the first time in my life, I have enjoyed being different. If it's given to others, I won't be different. My dear, you will be with people who will appreciate I don't want to be with people! No point in pursuing this. You're not giving it to anyone else. And you're not giving any orders. something. Hungry? No. Making grilled cheese. I don't know why I get hungry so late at night. It's the wrong time to eat, but I can't help it. You want me to make you one? Something wrong? Sit down. I will. Just let me get this on the griddle. No. I will in a minute. No. I said, in a minute. No, me no sin to be. Do you understand me? It is over. It is finished. It is the end. How did... How did you... If anything happens to your father, or to your sister, or to anyone else... What? What will you do? I will destroy you. Don't try it. Rita, don't make me. You can't! I'm the only one! 
gone. Where do you think you got it? No. No, I was born with it. That's right. You better think of what you're going to take with you. I'm not going to something warm. It's quite cold there until July. I'm not going. I'll help you. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. No, I'm in there. Jordan. I am experiencing the distortion once again. It's a little clearer this time. I have an idea that I'm going to try. I end this tape with a note. The telekinetic concentration seems to intensify after the Matchett's relocation. The board indicates movement to coastal cities, San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Lake Ridge, being only one of four 
inland rural communities high in alpha intensity. Carmel, extending to the Big Sur, then south to San Luis Obispo, and north to Seaside. It's much, much too tempting. And I'm afraid. It's like any kind of power. It's much too tempting. It's much too tempting. I'm afraid. <laughs> Largo in Sura Muda into Vivos, Giro Nominos Ipsa Jury into Paris. Largo in Sura Muda into Vivos, Giro Nominos Ipsa Jury into Paris. the conclusion of the spell and I'd like to know what your thoughts are well you know going into this you know from all the hype that it's a ripoff of Carrie so to speak yes um, I'm glad that it's not it's really not I, I mean yes there are some similarities yes um, you know yes she's an outcast and she's picked on especially at the beginning of the movie you're like oh you know, it, it, it plays out like it's going to be Carrie, doesn't it? That girl died. She yeah. fell off the rope. She did. Yeah, she did. I mean, so outside that little in the beginning right. and, uh, you know, at the end, you know, when she's, you know, hurling the you know knives psychically at her mother. Yes. yes. You know, I mean, those are very similar um, to Carrie. But what I like about this is that this has um, its own witchery, chanting, and magic and spells and you know it's just not um, supernatural powers right it yeah. is weird it gets weird mm -hmm. now every one of you out there at one point in your life has dreamt of having the power to smite your enemies yeah and that's what I like about the story mm hmm you know because once she has control over the power man Rita ain't cool uh, no. Rita ain't cool. Look, no, no. She's Rita's, pretty jaded, yeah. Rita's rich, okay? Mm. She can have friends. Yeah. Because you know what? They'd be like, come over to my mansion. <laughs> right, yeah. Pretty much. You're right, yeah. You'll have some friends. Yeah. So, you know, you're a little bigger. <laughs> Big deal. Mm -hmm. They'd have been like, hey, we're going over swimming the pool. Right. All their friends. But, you know, she was vengeful. She was. As adolescents are. Yeah, yeah. And even some adults. True. Right. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Now, you know, you had said, you know, she's a little bigger. Now, that's not the word that they used. I know. You know, I, know. I mean, fat. Um, and I had thought about that. I was like, man, that is harsh. That's very harsh. Very vulgar word to use. Yes. You know, it really is. Um, but then I had thought about that. I'm like, well, you know, I think they kept that in there um, to make it a little more hard. Yes. You know? Yes. Really. And it does. I mean, 
Not right, but All right. it does make it a little harder. But I mean, her family, all of them, the mom, the dad, Helen Hunt, they were all uncool. Well, like we said, you know, nobody is cool in this movie. Nobody's cool. You're not rooting for anybody. And I think that they did a really good job of um, you know, showing how, uh, you know, the dad was partial um, to uh, Christina, which is Helen yes. Hunt's character. Yes. Um, they did a really good job of that, you know? They did. I mean, you know, uh, Lee Grant, um, she's kind of stuck in the middle. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yes, and as we come to see at the end, you know, she has the power as well. Right, exactly. But the scene where they're having dinner, you know, the only thing that's on Rita's plate is a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yeah. No. You know, Helen Hunt's over there no. eating a roast chicken. You know, she, he's like, here, let me give you some more. Let me put some more down on the plate. <laughs> you know, Rita don't get none. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, this does play out a little bit like a macabre uh, after school special. It does. It does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Now, the other thing that we had noticed is imagine at some point in your life that you're sitting at the dinner table with your folks and you're 15 and you smack that glass of milk across them mashed potatoes and splashes your dad in his face and on his black turtleneck. <laughs> right. That would have gone down completely different. My father would have been a mushroom clown. Oh, you know? oh. I mean, there would have been a scene that my neighborhood had never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> And I wouldn't have ran upstairs. I would have ran outside. Yeah, I would have been gone. I'm telling you, this That's film it. would have been called The Fugitive. <laughs> the greatest I... beating ever told. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah. Because I would have been on the run. If I could have made it out of the kitchen, I would have been on the run. Yeah, that would have been it. Because, I mean, psh, it hit him right in the mud. <laughs> it, it did. And if you can just envision yeah. one of your parents getting hit with that glass of milk. Think about that reaction. Yeah, especially <laughs> in the in the late seventies. In the seven, you know, oh. <laughs> can't even. Can't, I can't even think of it. Can't even imagine. And you know, as much as I love the music, and I do, you know, Gerald Fried did a great job. Um, the main theme that goes on throughout this movie, I can't help it. I mean, to me, it sounds a lot like "Sunshine on My Shoulder" by. John Denver, doesn't it? It does. It really does. Now, there's music throughout this that has that night gallery kind of it does. feel to it, which, yes. I, which I love. But there's a scene towards the end where the horns come in. And I'm kind of waiting for Bob Newhart to pop up. Yeah, and Suzanne Plachette. <laughs> I mean, I am. We got the power, yeah. too. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But overall, this film was plenty of fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, it's an interesting, it's it an interesting little movie. And this ending is not available on other viewings of this film. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's not on every copy. That's correct. Like if you go to Tubi to watch it, the ending is different. Yeah, um, you don't have, uh, you know, um, the psychic professional. Right. And listening back to the tapes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You just have them hugging and, you know. And that's it. You know, I mean, you know, he cuts to the end. Yes. You know. But this is better. This one is better. I think so. Yeah. Makes oh, it sure. makes it crazy. Yeah. I mean, this was a great movie. It was good. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It really was. And we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again from the Lost Treasure in Cinema. And until next time, good, good night. night.